Hi and welcome to a new video. This video will be part of the Q&A series of the 3M build, so the Aqua Exhalare. And in this video we will mainly talk about the fluid itself, so about 3M Novak 7100. In the previous video I asked you guys to put all your questions about the whole project down in the comments. I went through all the comments, it was like 300 or 400 comments and I noticed that roughly 50% of the comments were about the fluid itself. So in this video we will just talk about the fluid itself so we, we should be able to clarify most of the questions you guys had about the fluid itself. So a lot of people ask what is even 3M Novak 7100 and what's the chemical formula? So 3M Novak 7100 is methyl nonafluorobutyl ether. I hope I pronounced it correctly, I'm not even sure. The chemical formula of it, of it is C4F9OCH3. So I'm not a chemist myself, so I cannot really tell you too much about the fluid from a chemical point of view, but at least we can talk about the properties. So that's 7100, 3M Novak, and that's normal tap water. So if you just look at it, you cannot really tell the difference. So density of water is one, density of 7100 Novak is 1.5 gram per cubic centimeters. And if you look at it just like this, it's quite hard to tell a difference, but this is about three times more fluid than water, which also makes it quite difficult to handle the fluid. Because if you use any kind of sealants, all the sealants which we use usually in water cooling components, um, like those uh, small O-rings, they usually EPDM O-rings for um, water cooling components. And all of those are made for water and not for a fluid like this. So it's really difficult to use 3M Novak with uh, standard sealed components because it's just very, very liquid. So let's talk a little bit more in detail about 3M Novak 7100. As you can see, it's transparent, looks same as water. It's not flammable. It has a boiling point of 61 degrees Celsius at atmospheric pressure. It's not electrically conductive and it's not hazardous. It's also not classified as a hazardous good, which makes it very easy to work with. And one of the most asked questions was also, how dangerous is this fluid? And what happens if you would swallow it, if you would in, uh, inhale the gas? So to find out more about that, we can simply check the safety data sheet of 3M Novak. And if we go to chapter 11, which is the toxicological information, we can go to inhalation and it says, no health effect, effects expected. If we go to skin contact, it says contact with skin during product use is not expected to result in significant irritation. Eye contact, contact with eyes during product use is not expected to result in significant irritation. Ingestion, no known health effects. So already those small details on top of the toxicological information shows that this fluid is really, really not dangerous at all. So if we scroll down a little bit further, we can actually find the details of the toxicity and you can find the name of the fluid on the left side, then you can find the root, for example, dermal, inhalation, ingestion, whatever. Then the species, I know it's quite cruel, but we have to do this kind of testing. So we have to, um, so we, we can know what the effects is on the human body, for example. And in this case, it was, test, it was tested with red and on the right side, on the value, you can see something that's called LD. 50 and LD means the lethal rate and LD50 means the lethal dose. So basically this describes how much you have to consume per kilogram of your body weight until it gets dangerous, for example. And if we just go to Wikipedia and we check out the LD50 table, there are actually five categories. So for example, if you have a fluid and it shows that LD50 value is below five, it means below five milligram of whatever substance per kilogram of body weight, if you consume this, it's gonna be really, really toxic and you're very likely to die. So that's, for example, that's the highest category, that's category number one, and then it goes down to up to category five. Category five is 2,000 to 500, uh, 2,000 to 5,000 milligram, milligram per kilogram body weight. And you can see, for example, oral or dermal, there is no value even given. So in this category, category five, it's actually considered not toxic anymore. And if we go back to the safety data sheet of the 3 Novik 7100, and if we check the root ingestion, we check species red, we check LD50 value, it says it's above 5,000 milligram 
per kilogram body weight and that already shows that the fluid itself is really not dangerous. It doesn't really matter if you put it on your skin, if you would drink it, if you would inhale it. I mean, I wouldn't recommend to do it. I mean, why would you even do it? But just so you know, even if you would have it in your system and something would leak, it's really not an issue. So I also had 3M stopping by my office the other day and we were discussing some of the technical developments and also some of the health and safety aspects about this fluid and they told me that they had a case where a different company was using 3M Novex 7100 as a cleaning fluid and they had like an open bath with over 100 liters in there and they had to do some kind of safety calculations and they checked so if all of those 100 liters would rapidly evaporate like instantly and all of the 100 liters would go into the room the gas is so volatile that after 10 seconds they were not able to track the gas anymore in the room and that already shows that it's not really an issue if you have your if you would have your system on there if you have, would have the fluid in there and let's say something is leaking or it's not not 100 sealed and some of the gas would come out there is no way this would reach anything or any value that could be dangerous for your health. So one more also very common question was, what's even the price of 3M Novak 7100? And it really depends on how much you take, how regularly you buy at 3M. And typically you would look at something between 70 and 150 euro per liter. So it's actually quite expensive. Talking about the price and also ordering the fluid, a lot of people asked me, hey, I want to build a system like this and I want to order the 3M Novex stuff but I cannot find it, I cannot buy it. The reason for it is that you're not allowed to buy it. So only companies can buy the fluid, only companies are allowed to sell it to companies. So even if you would, if you would like to have a system like that, I would not be able or not allowed to sell it to you. And the reason for this is REACH. REACH is a chemical thing from the EU and basically it's a regulation for all kind of chemicals and according to REACH, we are not allowed to give it to private people. And it's also not up to 3M to decide it, as I said before, because it's uh, regulated by REACH. So there's not really anything we can do about it. But if you're like a company, if you want to buy a system for ex exhibition, for example, we would be happy to build a system for you, of course. So one more very common question was, why are we even using this fluid and why were, are we not using like uh, mineral oil or even like pure water? So we cannot use pure water, even if it's pure, once you put it inside the system, it's not pure anymore. It would get electrically, electrically conductive. It would ruin your components. And also the boiling point is way too high, which is also the same issue of mineral oil because the boiling point is way too high. We want to have a two-phase cooling. We want the fluid to evaporate. We want to have the gas that we can condensate and all this kind of stuff. So we need a fluid with a very low boiling point. And because this fluid is not electrically conductive, it's not flammable, it doesn't really react with anything. The only problem, as I said before in the previous videos, are like sealants. That's the only real issue, but apart from that, it's really, really cool to use. And for example, I have a memory stick here. And as you can see, even the sticker, it's, it doesn't really matter if we use that side. We can just put it inside the fluid. And after a few seconds, it's completely dry and there are no residues on this whatsoever. There's no way you can tell that this stick has been in this fluid. Sometimes it even looks cleaner than before because it's kind of like a solution as well. So for example, if you have fingerprints on it or if you would have some like silicone residues from thermal pads and stuff, the fluid would actually remove it. So after using the hardware inside the fluid, it looks better than before. So that's also one reason why we're using this and also a lot of people ask what happens if you want to change the hardware. It's very easy to change the hardware. We can just take out the hardware completely entirely out of the system and after a few seconds all the fluid is gone, looks exactly like new and yeah, there's really no issue using it. In the previous video I was also talking about that we actually had to remove some of the plastic parts because I was not sure if the fluid would react with some of the elastomers inside there. And then a lot of people sa said, so why do you leave the heat spreader on the memory sticks? Uh, yeah, basically I just like the look of those memory modules. It, they just look very nice um, in an RGB way. And I did testing with those before. I just put them into, into the fluid for several weeks and checked if something was happening, but nothing happened to this type of plastic. So it was fine to use. 
So I hope this should clarify most of the questions about uh, 3M Novak 7100, about the like, chemical properties, that it's not really dangerous for your health, that it's not classified as a hazardous good, which makes it very easy for us to use because we can even do like international shipping and stuff without any problems. So I hope I could clarify most of your questions about the fluid. If you have even more questions about the fluid, please put them in the comments down below. In the next video, we will go back to the system. We will talk about all the details of the system, more about all your questions you had, like for example, why we're, uh, why I didn't submerge the, um, the M2 SSD, why it was still up there, how the condensation works, all this kind of stuff we will do in the next Q&A video about the Aqua Accelare. So I hope you enjoyed this video, as I said before. If you have questions about liquid, just put them in the comments. Otherwise, enjoy the rest of the day and see you soon.